It's my honor to introduce a colleague and friend. Uh, Omar is the director of detainees for the Syria Emergency Task Force. He himself was a detainee uh, at the age of 15 in the Assad regime prisons. Omar. I don't really remember myself as a child. I don't remember a lot of my childhood because I was arrested too early. I was 15 years old and before that my father's request was to go to school from school back home and study you should be engineer. Well, my mom wanted me to be doctor. So I was fighting between should I be engineer or doctor. That was my life. I don't remember a lot of my childhood. I was prisoner. I grew up in prison. Um, but I'm not going to tell you about prison or torture. I'm going to tell you about my nightmares when I got out of prison. You think like when you survive prison, your life is amazing again. You get back to your new life. You're going to feel happy. You have a great life. I got out of prison just when I arrived to Europe, start to receive calls. When I just create Facebook account or Twitter, families, mothers, fathers, siblings of detainees, call me and ask me, have you seen my son? Have you seen my brother? Have you seen my wife? Have you seen, have you seen, have you seen? And something being killed inside of me, something the government in Syria was working in killing in a few years, my humanity, at that time it was dead when I just arrived to Europe. So when somebody called me and a mom crying, have you seen my son? And give me a name, send me a picture, I say yes. They killed your son in front of me. And they pulled his eyes out of his face. And they pulled the nails out of his fingers without having any emotions, any feelings when I tell her this story. One day, son called me and said, what have you told my mom? She is in the hospital. She is dying. What did you say to her? That was the moment I knew if I don't make my humanity be alive again, I will never win the war against the Syrian regime. So I started to be more human. I knew that the way out was through. I start to talk about my experience. I start to share everything, go around. I was only in the beginning telling the horrible stories, how I experienced that. But then I start to have a bigger smile because I knew at some point the regime was watching me. And I don't, I didn't, and I don't want the regime, the same regime to see me weak anymore. I'm strong. I was weak in prison. Physically, mentally was weak. I never tried to attack the guard because I want to be alive. I didn't know how. Even kill me quickly, it will keep me alive. I don't want to be, I wanted to be safe there. But now, if I, the guard called me twice. Now, since I moved to Europe and said to me, if you don't shut up, we're going to kill you. And I, I talked to him in 90 minutes. I recorded the whole call. And I really been laughing a lot in this 90 minutes. Because finally, after a long time, after those years of torture, of pain, of losing my dad, my brothers, my best cousins, one of them died in my arms, the other one died sitting next to me, and everybody and my mom lost her hope, and my siblings lost their future, and everything. After all of that, I saw hope somewhere. I could smile, I can look at the mirror and say like, I'm, there is a future. I see something there, and I see you in front of me. I see future. I see some people who cares. When I start to care about this mother's feelings, I start to feel better. And you have, you do, you care, but care more. Do more for Syrians or for everybody who needs help around the world. I trust you are great people. Show me your great actions. Thank you.
Thank you, Omar. Thank you. We're, we're not supposed to hug in the era of corona, um, but in light of everything that each of our speakers have endured, and before we have our final speaker, Caesar, um, it is truly remarkable to just take a moment to reflect on the resolve and the tenacity of the people who have spoken thus far. Each of them were normal people 10 years ago who had lives and families and wanted to go and do the things that we take for granted every single day. And because of actions that they had no control over, their lives have been forced to become something entirely different. Many have been forced from their homes. There are people here from the Syrian community who've had to flee the country because of their actions. Uh, and it's a, a real honor to be able to be around you. And thank you for that incredibly touching comment uh, and remarks there, Omar.